we are live. Hi, everybody. Yay, it's Friday. It's August. What the heck is today? Today is August 7th. And welcome to the Ham Radio Outlet Shack Chat. I'm your host, Katie, WI7YL. Welcome here to my shack in Sundance, Wyoming. I hope everybody's having a great week so far. And uh, summer is here. It's going to be about 95 degrees outside today. So I'm really happy to be here in my shack, which is really pretty cool today. You know, the wintertime, it gets nice and warm when we're operating because I'm running the amp and getting it nice and toasty warm. But in the summer, I'm in the basement and it stays nice and cool. <laughs> so here we go. Here's some of our first folks. There is our friend from France. Hello. Hi, Greg. Greg's here and Spike is here. I'm excited for today's show. We've got a lot of fun things happening. But, you know, this was a kind of a fun week in case you guys... Uh, saw earlier this week on Facebook, I decided to do a quick Facebook live and say hi to everybody and let you know we put it. If so, if you're not on YouTube at the moment, you might not have noticed we put a new video out, um, got together with Chip K7JA, who took home one of the FTDX 101Ds and spent a lot of time with it and reviewed it and picked out some of the highlights and features that he thought people would really be interested in knowing about this you know, high-end transceiver. And what a radio, I tell you. And it was a lot of fun. So I got onto, onto Facebook to let everybody know that new video is out. And uh, I did that on Wednesday. And Wednesday also happened to be the 42nd wedding anniversary for Chip and Janet, KL7MF, who, of course, is our Anaheim store manager. So again, a happy anniversary to Chip and Janet. And then also on Wednesday was Eddie and Lorraine's anniversary. Eddie is KD4RAZ and Lorraine is KD4VSM down in our Plano store. It was their 37th anniversary. So Wow, what a fun, what a fun day for everybody around here. And <laughs> and then yesterday was Stan over in our Milwaukee store. It was his birthday. I called him out on Facebook too. I thought he would be there. It turns out he was on vacation. So everybody was sending him happy birthday wishes on on Facebook. So great celebratory week for everybody. And I hope everybody's been having a good one and staying cool. And um I'm my sending out my heartfelt wishes to all of our friends in New England who have been dealing with the power outages from the storm that's gone through. I know I see a lot of my friends and family back, particularly in Connecticut, who are still without power and uh, hoping everything goes well for everybody out there. It's always tough when Mother Nature um, whips our butt like that. That's for darn sure. So let's see what how else is happening here. Oh, and, you know, Chuck, I don't know if Chuck is here today. Chuck is one of our regulars. AC9F. If you show up here, um, Chuck and his bride, Laura, are celebrating 39 years today. So happy anniversary to you guys. Okay. What a week we've had so far. And uh, oh, <laughs> we caught you, Lee. Lee's goofing off at work, he says. <laughs> That's great. Um, Arnie's got a question. Well, Arnie, we'll catch up with that in just a bit. So today I have my friend Kevin Zanjani from bio no power and i'm really excited i'm gonna let me just bring kevin in here right off the bat so hi kevin welcome hi everyone how is everybody <laughs> we're doing good here let me just move this and ha ah, there he is well we were i'm really excited to have kevin because you know we i've been talking a lot about portable operations these days and so many people are home and being summer a lot of people have been out doing portable ham radio operations. And obviously, you know, there's a lot of radios that you can pick from to take your, you know, to go out QRP or, you know, say set up a ICOM 7300 or the 991 at a park and, you know, do field day or other, you know, parks on the air, other operations. But obviously you can't just go out with your radio. You got to power it. And every picture I see, I think everywhere on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Everybody who's out there has that really cool blue battery in the background. They're running their bio and batteries to get their radios charged up so that they can activate and have some fun with ham radio. So I thought, perfect. Let's talk to Kevin and find out more. Cause I don't know about you guys out there, but for me, I see all different shapes and sizes of batteries in people's videos and posts. And I'm never quite sure how the heck do you decide what battery to even get. And I'm sure there's a lot of good information. So that's why I thought I'm going to have the man tell us all about it. So 
putting Kevin sure. on today to give us all the information we need. And if you have some questions while we're going through the show, please do let me know. Put it in the chat here and uh, we'll come up with your questions. I saw that. Um, uh, let's see. Arnie has a question and we will catch up with that after because his question might be answered in some of the things you're going to talk about. And uh, we've also got some show and tell for you, too. So I'll uh, let's pop over. So Kevin is let me just remove this quick banner for a second. Do, do, do. Here's our quick welcome to Shack Chat. <laughs> so Kevin is KI6DHQ. And before the show started, I, I've mentioned this to everybody before. I said, you know, you know, we we settle up about maybe 15, 20 minutes early just to make sure everything's working and we can visit about whatever we want. And I was saying to Kevin, well, I know you're in Southern California. Do you use the Papa system? <laughs> Didn't notice he was wearing the Papa shirt there. <laughs> so you like to, so you do a lot of, uh, you do a lot of local stuff then, right, Kevin? Yeah. So I've been picking up the DMR radio. Um, so I'm getting that uh, worked out right now and uh, playing with that quite a bit. Uh, it seems to be, um, you know, the digital modes require a little bit, uh, it's, it's fun. It, um, in terms of the, uh, audio quality and the coverage it's 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 pretty good and it's, it's easy in the car as well so oh I yeah so i find that much easier right that's it is a lot of fun and you know i've just been experimenting it with more you know most recently and you guys have seen me talk about it in the videos and what have you and um it for me it's like opening up a whole new world that i just didn't have access to before and i always find if there's another way that you can talk to other people on the radio then go for it. Yay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. A lot of modes, you know, so there's quite a, so many options now in terms of the technology and, and what it right. offers. So Absolutely. Cool. So we're going to talk batteries today. You've been with BioNO Battery, I think, as long as I've known you have. You've been there. Well, I know BioNO has been around for a while now, but um, how long have you been doing? Uh, since the inception. So, okay. um, so we were founded in 2010. Um, yeah. And uh, we've been uh, offering the batteries uh, since um, 2012. So they've been out in the market since 2012. And then over the years, uh, we've entered into the uh, radio market um, and uh, offering uh, both lithium iron phosphate batteries and various solar products. And our, we're based here in Santa Ana, California, mm -hmm. in front of the ISO standards and uh, world-class technology and warranty. And then we have customers now uh, worldwide um, that are using the batteries. So uh, various different markets, including radio, but also commercial work that we do as well. So um, other industries um, like oil and gas and other industries, we also are in that market right. as well. So we've been expanding as well. Um, hey, I got yeah, a quick that, question that, for you. So we see this everywhere, the, you know, the LIFO port, do you, how do you even pronounce, do you pronounce the shortcut or do you just always say lithium iron phosphate or how, how do you do that? Cause yes. I, feel like a, I feel like a goofball sometimes. I'm like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> it actually, uh, it's uh, lithium iron phosphate or LIFEPO4, LFP. Um, some say also lithium ferrous phosphate using uh, the actual chemical uh, word, uh, yep. LIFE E. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of acronyms. Um, uh, that we've that we've seen uh, life po l i f e p o uh, yeah so uh, kind of usually I stick with l f p um, right to help distinguish it from other batteries okay so you're not making my life any easier but at least now I know <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, there's I mean there's a lot in terms of the the chemistries that are used for batteries so this is distinguished so. Uh, lithium iron phosphate uses what's called an iron phosphate bond. Uh, it's a very thermal and chemically stable bond uh, and gives a very high degree in terms of charge cycles. So it's about 2,000 to 3,000 charge cycles. Um, we've been seeing uh, the original batteries out there uh, since about 2012. So uh, yep. it's been about eight years. Um, they've been still operating. So we go back to the original customers and say, these are mostly OEM customers are asking, do you need change them out. They said, no, it's still going. Um, so there's quite a bit of cycles that you can get out of the batteries. Um, it's also, we want to distinguish this from the lithium ion polymer batteries uh, or LIPO. So there's polymer batteries that are found, for example, in your phones um, and uh, polymer batteries uh, found in certain laptops as well. This chemistry uses uh, cylindrical cells. So they're little cylinders um, that go inside of the battery and um, that's what's used in order to uh, build the battery packs for these. And that gives you um, 
uh, also the charge cycles and the service life. So it's one to distinguish that um, versus oh. other batteries on the market. And it's also, um, that's important because uh, that's where you get the cycle life. Uh, right. Well. Cool. That is, um, wow. You know, it, it's one of those things that you just take for granted, don't realize, you know, how much is really involved with that and how important it actually is. So, um, yeah. I'll let you and so, yeah, so there's uh, there's also some differences. Uh, so if we compare it also to a lead acid battery, uh, a lot of customers uh, that were using lead acid batteries, um, they've been replacing those batteries uh, with lithium iron phosphate batteries. So uh, a lead acid battery, it's got a lot of problems. It sulfates, it vents, it leaks. Uh, it's quite, lead's quite toxic. This is inherently safer because of a very strong chemical bond. Um, so it's a lot better in that in that regards. Uh, also for from a recycling standpoint, it's a lot easier. Uh, and uh, lead acid batteries are quite heavy. So if you've probably seen a uh, customer uh, previously before they bought the batteries they were using lead batteries, they're quite heavy. Right. Uh, and this is about a third the weight uh, and a lead battery, maybe a few hundred cycles you get out of the battery, but this is like two to 3000 cycles. Um, wow. And what distinguishes this battery from uh, a lead acid battery also is the fact that uh, a lead battery has no circuitry built into it. There's no notion of a protection circuitry in there. So if you were to, let's say, leave all your equipment on and you attach it to a lead acid battery, you can over discharge, yes, uh, the lead acid battery. You can bring the voltage down too low. So you oh. get to a point where you can uh, over discharge that lead battery and you can't uh, easily recharge it. It goes bad, basically. But with the, with the lithium iron phosphate batteries, there's a circuit board built into it. And what's that, what that circuit board is doing is it's preventing any kind of uh, over discharge or over current or under voltage, over voltage and thermal protections. And that protects the cells in the pack. So let's say you were to leave, uh, you attach your radio um, to these batteries um, and you leave the radio running and you were to leave it on and you forget to shut it off. The battery is gonna shut itself off at around 10 volts um, to protect okay. the pack. Yep. So then you can recharge it. Nothing's damaged in the battery. Um, it's protected. Um, so that's a big advantage because with the lead acid batteries, um, you can't, if you were to leave a lot of equipment running and you bring it down to about uh, eight volts or so, then it's very difficult to recharge that battery. So um, it, that, that's a really cool feature of these batteries as well. So um, that is cool. Yeah. And wow. um, there's, uh, there's also the capacity advantage. Uh, so uh, beforehand, customers were using lead acid batteries, very large lead acid batteries to run radios. And the reason right. why is um, there's, a, there's an effect in the SLA chemistry, the lead acid chemistry, where only 50% is usable, at which point the voltage drops too low. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas with the lithium iron phosphate batteries, you can get nearly 100% usable capacity out of it. So you can wow. use a really small battery to run radio equipment. Whereas right. before, you'd have to use a very heavy, large lead battery to carry it around. Right in order to run that equipment. So because, instead, uh, you know, I could just bench press this one, you know. <laughs> you could do that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the 12 volt, 12 amp hour. I have a 12 volt, uh, nine amp hour here. Uh, so they've got the power pole connectors already attached to it. So you right. can plug that directly into the radio. And then we have this barrel connection. Um, we put that in there because there's a there's a there's there's actually a charger um, that you would get with the batteries. So this right. is called the BLF series batteries. Yep. And then there are these chargers called the BPC chargers. Yep. And then these plug into the to the barrel connection there. And then you then plug this into to the radio. Right. Um, and so uh, we've kind of made it easy in that regards where you don't have to carry a very large power supply with you. Um, right. Like you just have something small and then you can just charge it up uh, out in the field. So for portable operations, that's pretty important. You want something that's really light, really easy oh, yeah. to work with. So right. um, there's more uh, in terms of the performance and longevity. Uh, if you take a look there, uh, there's no memory effect with this chemistry, um, which is a big advantage. So you could be charging at 25, 50 or 75 percent, meaning you could use this for both the, what they call cyclic application. Radio is a cyclic application, typically. Uh, you would charge the battery, you go ahead and use the battery throughout the day, and then it, it, it drains out and then it shuts off. Or you could use it for like a, a UPS, like a telecom application, it's called standby. So let's say you have a, a UPS system and use these batteries to replace the lead batteries, certain models that we have can be used. Um, you could then keep partially, uh, you could hit it with a small charge 
and there's no memory effect, meaning you can still use all the capacity out of the battery. It's very oh. different than other chemistries. Um, so that takes us into the next point is if you partially cycle the battery, um, right. you don't get that degradation. Other chemistries are, are really affected by that. Uh, if you partially mm -hmm. cycle a battery, older chemistries tend to have that problem. Um, so there's a big advantage there where customers, for example, if they were to, let's say, partially cycle the battery, um, they use maybe a certain percentage of it, um, mm -hmm. and then they then recharge it, uh, you're not going to have a degradation issue uh, right. with, with partial partial cycling. And you can also get a pretty good self-discharge rate, right. only a few percent per year. So You know, that kind of reminds me, and, I, and this is probably going way back in time, but, you know, it was kind of like, I remember when f cell phones first became more like everybody had one, you know, or became much more popular. But there was always this thing about like, wait till your battery fully drains before you charge it up again. And <laughs> I don't, it, yeah. because it was like pointless or something. And, and nowadays you just don't even think about that, but it makes a lot of sense, especially with your, with your radios and you're out and about that, you know, you don't have to worry about that degradation. That's kind of nice. Hey, we've yeah, had a yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, I was just saying we had a couple of questions and Lee's wondering, can what's the best way to charge it from a vehicle? That's a good question. Um, so there is a, uh, there's a product from WMR West Mountain Radio. Uh, mm -hmm. They make the Epic PowerGate product. Um, they've, uh, customers have been also using that um, in order to charge the batteries uh, from the alternator as a source. So if you have a DC source mm -hmm. in order to charge the battery, the Epic unit, um, which is available at the stores, uh, they will be um, able to charge the batteries from the alternators at input. So it's a little right. box. Um, you can yep. just connect it in there. It does the job. Super. And we'll have, we'll have a link to that at, after the show is over. So that way you guys can shop easily. And uh, here's another good question. Arnie's wondering, can you charge and use the battery at the same time? It's a great question. Um, so you can, yes. Uh, so what we're providing, if you're getting the BPC, Charger, this is a power supply. So technically okay. what this does is it just puts out voltage and current. There's circuitry is built into the battery that does the protection against uh, over discharge, overcharge, overcurrent and balancing function. That's inside the battery. So you can charge and discharge at the same time. It does not damage the battery, uh, nor does it damage the, the, um, the, the power supply or charger. So uh, right. because that circuitry is built into the battery, um, that's that's important, and then we can enable both of that. Uh, just keep in mind, if you do that, um, it takes longer to charge the battery because you're pulling power out while this is trying to deliver power in. So oh, sure. um, just keep that in mind. It just takes longer to charge Great. the battery, but it will work. And then Arnie had this question right kind of at the beginning, and he was wondering, can he run his BLF-1220A in parallel with his BLF-1212A? You can't do that because there's a mismatch in the capacities. So the issue is uh, one, the um, depending on the state of charge uh, issues is the current might go into the other battery and shut off the circuit board in the other battery. So okay. we don't advise that um, if you're mixing models of batteries. Great, thank you very much. See, this is great. So guys, continue to drop your questions in here. So, <laughs> cause I don't, I don't think you can stump Kevin. I should have thought of that as I stump Kevin with your questions, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Let me go back to, our, right. <laughs> you know, it's supposed to, we're, we got to have fun with this. Otherwise what's yeah. the point? So, <laughs> uh, were we, st we were still talking about some of the performance and longevity, I believe before we. Yeah. So the self discharge rate is quite yeah. low. Um, so uh, that's important because if you, if you're to leave it on the shelf, it'll, only loses about a few percent on a yearly basis. Wow. Um, it holds, it's charged really well, this chemistry, from other uh, types of lithium battery chemistries and also um, the older chemistries, uh, which are not used as much, nickel metal hydride. Um, right. We don't hardly use anymore. I, I think it's to some degree, but uh, with other, if you benchmark against other uh, lithium chemistries, if you benchmark it against a lead acid, it's a big deal because a lead acid battery, you have to keep a t what they call a trickle charger on it. Um, mm -hmm. You have to keep things attached to a lead battery, whereas this one it's a big deal. So um, it's uh, you don't have to do that. You don't have to, it's more of a maintenance, low maintenance battery um, in that regards. Right. So, um, that kind of takes us to our next point in terms of the full capacity advantage of the batteries. Um, uh, we were talking about the lead acid batteries, so you have to, you know, usually you have to carry a really large lead battery because only 50% is usable. Um, to, and you need to compensate for that. Whereas with this particular chemistry, you can get all that, that capacity out of it and circuit board shuts everything off. Um, 
and uh, we get some questions about the, the circuit board, the PCM. Um, so if, uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, you'll see um, these uh, circuit boards that are used inside the batteries. So a lot of the questions we get is, well, does every battery have a circuit board? The answer is yes. All of the BLF series batteries have circuit boards built into it. Hmm. Um, and, and what that does is it does that protection against overcharging. It does that equalization and balancing of the cells. There's okay. over voltage, over current, over discharge, short circuit and temperature protections in the battery. So hmm. uh, we put that in there so that um, it keeps you know the cycle life high. Um, yep. Other manufacturers uh, may not have boards uh, built into them. So right. uh, other lithium batteries, for example, the, the lithium batteries they use in uh, radio controlled toys like cars and quadcopters, oh, yeah. RC cars and planes, um, there's no circuitry in those batteries. Um, so you're relying on special chargers and you have to watch the voltages and things like that. Whereas this one is intended for electronics use, like ham radio, and you mm -hmm. can, it's, you know, it uh, has that circuit board to sh protect the battery um, from that standpoint. Um, right. We just had a good question pop in here from Randy. He's wondering if he doesn't, if he doesn't use his battery for an extended period, should he just charge it up before the next use, or just leave it charging all the time? Does it hurt it to keep it plugged in? So that's a good question. So it takes us back to the previous uh, uh, slides about the, um, the effects of partial cycling. Um, so if we partial cycle the battery, uh, if you go back to the performance and longevity slide. Uh, there we go. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that particular, this particular chemistry, um, in your case, if you were to top it off, it does not, we're not having a degradation issue. So right. if I was to leave it charged up, if I was to let it charge continuously, that's fine. Um, it won't. It, it will. It, we won't have any issues in terms of suffering from the degradation. So you're okay. Great. And then uh, Charles had another one wondering: Is there any concern about heat if he's got it in an enclosure? Um, yeah. So the the battery has um, the temperature of operation for the battery uh, for discharging is about 60 degrees Celsius, which I, it's about 143 Fahrenheit. Wow. So um, there's, and then there's a temperature sensor that does shut off the output to protect the cells if the temperatures exceed 143 Fahrenheit. Now, I, <laughs> there are places I have to, we were just talking about hot, hot days. Um, right. uh, you know, I, it might be Tucson, might be somewhere yeah. in the southern part of Arizona. <laughs> yeah. uh, it can get, I don't know, the ambient gets 143, but uh, sometimes the question is if they have an enclosure and then if it's, uh, if it exceeds 143 in the enclosure right. at that temperature, you know, temperature, yeah, it has a safety mechanism. It just shuts itself off, protects Okay. Itself. Well, I yeah. suppose if it's in a go box, for example, and you've got it in your car and your car is yeah. closed and you're out in the desert of, you know, Phoenix or something, I, I could see that it could get that hot, but that's really good to know yeah. that it's, that it has that kind of, that level of protection. So it just, yeah, it's got a level you know, of protection in there. It's just so you get the cycle life out of the batteries. Right. Yep. Very cool. So we were, um, if you go to the uh, battery spec slide, the next one, I can share okay. more about, yeah, this is a, oh, a cool spec sheet, um, that we also can provide, uh, customers. Um, some hams are, are quite, they want to build their own charging systems. Uh, you'd be sure. surprised. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> they, uh, you know, we're like, well, I want to build my own charging system. You know, I need the parameters. So we can provide you the parameters. Uh, for the for the charging, um, this is one example of the parameters. Uh, right. we, we we would send that uh, uh, information if they needed it. Um, but what's important to note is where it says internal impedance um, less than 100 milli ohms. Uh, in the it, it's kind of small, but uh, that's oh, here, this yeah. back yeah that uh, internal impedance um, is really important for this chemistry to uh, and, and a big advantage to. A low internal penis means that that output voltage, uh, as the battery also as the battery ages, the, the internal penis stays low, meaning you don't see that voltage drop um, okay. uh, as the battery ages. A lead acid battery that you're, if you use lead acid batteries, as the battery ages, the output voltage gets worse and worse and worse every right. year. It seems to get worse. You don't get that high voltage anymore out of it. Whereas the lithium iron phosphate just stays at about 13.2 to 13 and a half volts even as the battery ages. And we've confirmed this um, with some of the original batteries that we've in provided to customers about eight years ago. Um, wow. It seems to just stay up there. So um, 
it's pretty cool. And that's, that's an also a big advantage because that means um, you don't need to use um, a battery booster, which is a okay. circuit board that raises the voltage. Mm -hmm. up. It's, it's not necessary with this chemistry. It's one less piece of equipment you would need. Lead acid batteries, you have to use these uh, battery booster systems to lift the, the voltage up um, to compensate for the lower voltage when it operates. So this is a little easier in that standpoint. So that let's, that way. yeah, so the chemistry itself lends itself to a better performance right. um, versus, versus a lead battery. Um, and speaking about performance, if you look at the discharge curve here, um, this is a pretty interesting slide. So um, what you'll notice is the discharge curve is very flat, meaning all of that capacity is available to the user um, for operation with the radio equipment. So this is an example of a discharge curve from a 20 amp hour battery. Um, and if you look at it, it, it just stays flat compared to a lead acid battery would start to, uh, to sag or dip very quickly. Right. And then around 10 volts, uh, the circuitry inside that battery will shut off the output. That's that another protection we were talking about earlier. Okay, so that yep. protects that protects the, the battery. Um, so you get number one, you can use all that capacity out of the battery. And then there's that protection mechanism built in into inside of the battery. So right. that's a pretty cool curve. Um, that is. And the next, next one is the temperature versus capacity. That actually, there was a previous question about temperature of operation. Oh, right. Um, so this curve shows you what goes on at the very cold temperatures. And what's really interesting is, um, Whereas a lead acid battery, uh, what they call an AGM, absorbed plasma, it's a type of lead acid battery, very popular one. If the temperatures get to about minus 20 Celsius, about 14 Fahrenheit, okay. um, the, the available capacity of a lead battery drops can drop to um, about 30% on the left-hand wow. side of that curve. So yep. you have to get a really large lead acid battery to make up for operation at very cold temperatures. So let's right. say you were, for whatever reason, you're operating, you need to operate out in the snow um, on a really <laughs> cold day, and you want us to operate 100 watts, right? You would need a fairly large lead acid battery, something that's maybe uh, perhaps about 60 amp hours for 100 watt transmission, uh, which is quite heavy. Um, right. Whereas the lithiums, the temp the, that temperature uh, op availability, the capacity is only about 80 some percent still available. So you mm. can still use the small battery at that low temperature. It's not gonna create any issues. Right. And at the higher temperatures, um, there's not, we don't see any much degradation there. So this is a, this kind of hits that point in terms of, um, you know, the advantages of really cold temperatures, right. um, which might be important for cus you know, customers or people that are in the North um, that wanna operate outside. So, um, right. Like if you live like where I do and you have winter, like 85 months out of the year, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it feels like that in some years. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, it gets, it's, it's about, it's, it should be about, it's below freezing, right? Typically around freezing, um, uh, in Wyoming. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, like we yeah. easily get to, you know, the negative temperatures quite a bit also. Yeah. So. yeah. Needless to say, I'm not doing any portable ham radio those days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's interesting. Uh, it was an interesting application we have is um, another application that they use the batteries is actually for um, in, uh, there's an ice there's an auger ice auger for ice fishing. So sure. um, customers are using the lithium iron phosphate on these ice augers um, where they go they drill in the ice and so right. the lead batteries I mentioned the capacity diminishes so much at the cold temperature. But right. the problem is the enclosure for the ice auger is, is fixed. So they can't just get a big battery and lug it around and plug it in the ice auger. You right. could, but they wanted something better. And we said, well, you use our, you know, nine or 12 amp hour battery and it works, it works great um, uh, for cool. ice fishing. So yeah. it's a neat application <laughs> um, for lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, there are a lot of interesting things you can do uh, in the cold temperatures if you really oh, do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so here's an interesting question. Randy's wondering what the main difference is between the batteries, you know, wrapped in the blue or yeah. that are in the black, black plastic cases. Is it, does that mean anything or is it? Cosmetics, honestly. Oh, okay. So yeah, <laughs> we get, uh, it's, it's purely, uh, uh, we, uh, we just, uh, the wrap we get for this is for the smaller batteries. And then we have wraps that are for the larger ones. Um, oh, okay. 
Well, that's good to know yeah. because sometimes yeah, you wonder, oh, maybe this one. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, a good, it's, good. it's a good question, Randy. Thanks. It's a good question, though. Yeah. No, I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Uh, Should um, we pop back over to here? Let's yeah, see. we can pop oh, back. Yeah. So that we go to the weighted average calculations. Um, oh, boy, so here we go. Yeah, the next question we got is, um, how do I calculate the run times? Um, and so uh, there's, uh, with the radio, uh, uh, radio, there's a duty cycle. So when you transmit, you transmit at a higher power and you receive at a lower power. So right. if you key up, there's more power being pulled out of the radio. And then when you let go and you receive less power, um, the radio consumes less power. So we have to actually determine the run time. There's something called a weighted average. Um, so if I was to operate um, w the weighted average power for uh, a QRP radio, let's say I was transmitting about 10 watts and the radio transmits, you transmit, for example, 20 percent of the time you transmit at, at 10 watts and then 80 percent of the time uh, receive at about two watts. The weighted average is about four watts. So that 12 amp hour battery in there um, would run about a 40 hour runtime. Um, so that could be across several days. Um, for QRP so, transmission for very small QRP radios. So this, uh, like radios. which is the 12 amp hour, that means I could basically have this run in for a full work week of 40 hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you hey, could be operating. Yeah. From what we've seen, they've charged it up. Um, I, I, we've talked to some customers, they've charged up that battery with the QRP radios. They were operating throughout an eight hour day. And then they said, I don't, I didn't need to recharge. It's probably around day four ish, wow. uh, day five. So That's amazing. Um, depends on the mode yeah it's been uh pretty neat um if you uh if you go to a 100 watt transmission a larger battery is used so uh, right. 100 watts and receive at two watts and you can't use necessarily a 12 amp hour battery for a, a, a whole day's transmission we would suggest the sure. 20 amp hour battery which is a little bit of right. a larger battery mm -hmm. um and that would get you about 10 to 11 hours of runtime but uh you can operate the radio at the 100 watt transmission um wow. So it, it, it will it will certainly provide what you need uh, in that regards. That's um, awesome! Wow. Yeah. So we have a a chart. If, uh, we'll go to the uh, duty cycle chart. Uh, okay. Uh, on that. Maybe. I'm gonna pop over here yeah. for quick. Yeah. Well, while I pull that up for you, I'm gonna uh, pop in Greg's question here for you. So let's see. He's wondering about flying commercial. I, do you mean like drones or like flying a plane? What's he talking yeah. about? <laughs> Uh, carry on. So uh, the right now that um, that TSA and the FAA have limited the, the carry on right now to 160 watt hours and two batteries on carry on. So that would be the largest battery that you could do on carry on is 12 volt, 12 amp hour. However, right now uh, uh, the battery industry's petition TSA and F FAA, uh, both agencies, uh, they may be expanding it out. So okay. uh, right now it's still 160 watt hours, but it may expand out. Uh, we're still waiting to hear back. Um, uh, the whole industry is waiting to hear back. It may go to 300. So because a lot of, there's so many batteries used in a lot of things right now, uh, but right now it's still 160. Oh, great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So I just pulled up our new slide and this was our when I pulled it up to do a full screen, it kind of did something weird. So oh, if you guys don't mind, you can see the. the so this is an example. Of here. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. problem. Um, this is kind of the, a, a chart. Um, so we were talking about that weighted average. Um, right. And we'll revisit this later on in, in the presentation as well. Uh, but this is a chart that gives you the run times based on the transmit wattage and the receive wattage for the for the radios. Um, so there's a there's a look up how this works typically is if you go, if you start on the left hand side, it says transmit and then receive. And then on the right hand side, you'll see the uh, the runtime. So right. if we're at uh, a 10 watt radio um, uh, on transmit 10 watts, then the three, the BLF 1203W or the A or AB battery mm -hmm. would get us about six hours of runtime, uh, which nice. is shown on the right hand side. Right. And then if we if we wanted something that could go about 12 hours, we, we have to go to the BLF 1206A or AB that gets us a 12 hour runtime. Um, so this is a chart. Um, uh, it's available um, uh, to take a look at to help for the battery selection. Um, so uh, for any kind of uh, any kind of uh, radio powers that you have, uh, if you're going to more like VHF, UHF, 50 watt radios, um, we would suggest at a minimum of about a you know nine amp hour battery um, that would get you about seven hours or so. 
uh, of runtime. And then uh, 100 watt radios, uh, we have uh, like the 15 amp hours, about seven and a half hours, or 20 amp hours, about um, 10 hours of runtime. So this will help you uh, in that selection as well. Um, right. And I'm thinking, so, you know, Mark's just asking that he's building a go box with uh, two radios, a Pi, the LCD. So here's a perfect chart for you to figure out which battery to get. And of course, you can always give, you know, give our stores or give BioNO a call directly to ask your questions also. But, and I will put a link, this is um, posted on the FAQ page on BioNO's website, but I'll also put a, a link to it in the video description when we're done here today. So it's an easy reference for you guys to go check this out. But I think this is super helpful because that, you know, for me, I know I'm always wondering, all right, there's so many options. How do I know which which one do I pick and, you know, how do I match that up? So, I mean, and I love the fact that you can look at how many possible hours you can get to run with. I mean, that's great. So you can know if you're going to go out, Hey, I might actually get, you know, a full day of, of operating time out in the park. Yeah. And that's sort of the number one question by far. And the chart helps a lot in, in the selection of the battery. Um, and so uh, we can jump back to the presentation. Um, oh, some the questions back. about, some questions about solar. So we're going to shift gears a bit. Um, so right. we have a lot of questions about these batteries and, and how do I charge the batteries with solar? So we've right. got a couple of things here. So we have a battery um, with, the, with the connectors, right? So the next question is, how do I charge it with solar? And so the first thing you need is something like a, a foldable solar panel is one option here. So uh, a foldable solar panel, this is the BSP28 solar panel. This is a pretty cool panel. It that is. looks something like this, um, and it folds up. So you put it like this, you fold it up, and then it goes in a backpack. And so um, wow. it gives you about 28 watts of power. And what's what's neat about this panel is you can also chain it together. So there's these cables, and then mm -hmm. there's a chain port here, uh, if you can see it, where you can yep. connect one panel into the next and expand the system out. So um, this is a pretty cool scalable setup, but you also need what's called a solar controller here. Okay. Um, so you need a panel, you need a controller. So why do you need the controller? The controller is needed uh, because what this does is it regulates the voltage from the panel so it correctly charges the battery. We mentioned that there was circuitry in the battery, but the, the, the actual raw voltage, uh, open circuit voltage from the so solar panel is too high. So we need okay. a controller solar charge controller to bring that voltage down so it correctly charges the battery. Wow. So those are the three components that you need. So um, the panel is called, for example, is a BSP28 solar panel. Mm -hmm. And then the controllers, uh, the model number is uh, SC series. This is SC4830JUD. So any SC controller um, yep. would be used in order to to, to charge the batteries. And uh, a lot of the questions that we get is, you know, uh, well, how many watts for the solar panel do I need? If I have um, these batteries, uh, do, can I use that small uh, solar panel in, in, in order to charge the battery? Well, uh, you, you could actually. So if I have, um, if I wanted to charge a 12, that 12 volt, 12 amp hour battery that you have, Katie, um, yep. You'll notice uh, that's a it says 144 watt hours on the label, um, yep. right on the side. And uh, in order to charge that battery, in order to charge it up, we have to get something like around 60 watts, so it charges within a, a few hours. Right. So if I have if I have uh, two of those foldable panels, it would charge in about two to three hours. Um, if I only have one, it's about six hours. Um, it depends on what you know how much. Uh, the solar conditions. So depending where you're at, if you have um, if you have a very overcast day, uh, mm -hmm. these are maximum wattages for the solar panels. So sure. we, we advise something, you know, maybe a couple of pieces of 28 watt or, or a single 60 watt piece to, to make up for that. If it's a sunny day, you can use the smaller panels uh, because there's enough sunlight, um, direct right. sunlight hitting the panels as well. So um, but you know, 2.4 hours is, is quite quick. It's it's mm -hmm. fast um, yeah. for, for charging the batteries um, um, accordingly. Uh, and that takes us actually to so the next slide is, uh, it hits on that point again, is if I was to charge the battery, we talked about the fact that you need that solar controller. Uh, customers um, attempt to charge the battery 
directly from the solar panel. Okay, right. so that, we don't, we can't do that. So okay. <laughs> too high, and then it trips the circuit board and the battery, and they say, hey, what's going on? And we okay. say, well, you got to get, you got to get a controller to regulate that voltage, um, because the the open circuit voltage is anywhere between 18 to 20 volts, and then it steps that down in order to charge the battery. Right. So then on this, it really should be, do I really need a, a solar charge controller? Do you need a big yes across the screen? Yes. Yeah. A yes. So that is, <laughs> yes, yes is the answer. <laughs> yes is the answer. So uh, make sure that you get that when you, when you get the items is always get it, always have a controller ready to go um, with, with the batteries, um, with the solar panel in order to charge the battery. Right. Um, and then uh, the next question is, this is a very common question. Um, yeah. Do I need a special charger for these batteries? Um, so this is a technical answer. So the, the battery wants to see what's called constant voltage current limited power supply. So you can use any uh, switch mode supply or linear supply. So uh, as long as the uh, you don't need a fancy balancing charger. So the, the chargers they use in uh, the charge batteries for RC cars or quadcopters, mm -hmm. it's like a very fancy, it has a bunch of buttons on it, it's about this big. Um, right. That's not necessary. Uh, you can use a you can use a power supply uh, to charge the battery as well, but you have to make sure that voltage is between about thirteen point eight to fifteen volts and current limited uh, the output. So um, if you purchase the battery, uh, and the easiest way is just to get the supply. That's that's right. The, yeah, that's <laughs> number one suggestion. It's, it's simple. It's easy, uh, and then. Uh, the charger on it, it's a good question that just came up, is yep. this charger LED light uh, would turn from red to green. Um, after the battery, uh, af after this charger goes from red to green, um, the battery is effectively charged up. So it's, okay. it, it, it's finished delivering charge current. The question is also, how long does it take? Um, uh, so red to green, usually that's about four to six hours um, mm -hmm. on the initial charge for the battery. Right. Uh, uh, overnight chargers are okay. There's protection in, inside the battery. So if you were to leave it on overnight, no problem. Um, that, that would also uh, turn, right. turn green. Now, some customers, um, if you go back to the special charger slide, they, they want to use um, uh, mm -hmm. their benchtop supply. You know, they this have one? a benchtop, uh, uh, sorry, the next one. Yeah, this one. So uh, some customers, they want to use a, <laughs> um, a power supply and uh, they, uh, uh, you can, you can use a benchtop supply, but you need, um, for example, the, the Epic unit uh, from West Mountain um, uh, will current limit that power supply in order to correctly charge the battery. So oh. uh, if your power supply does not have the current limiting features on it, where you set the current, um, you would need that the Epic unit in order to interface between the, the, the benchtop supply Yep. to the battery. If your power supply has knobs on it where you set voltage, you set current, yes, you can use that uh, in order to charge your battery, set the voltage, set the current, depending on what size battery it is. Information is on the web, uh, um, HRO's website, um, as well as our website in terms of mm -hmm. uh, what charge currents to use. So um, uh, you can do it, just keep in mind, you gotta set those values uh, right. on it. If you want it the easy, very quick, um, very simple, uh, then yes, the, we highly suggest this power supply. It's a lot easier carrying this than it is to yeah. carry a brick, big bench top supply yeah. with you out <laughs> in the field. That defeats the purpose. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> we've gotten that question too at one point. So, yeah. Um, it's kind well, of interesting. It, especially so. since you have one that's, that goes specifically with your, your battery, you might as well just get the one that you know is going to work and do the job. Yes. Yeah. And, highly recommend. Make your life easier. It. Just get the one that yeah. goes with it. <laughs> exactly. Just get the one that goes with it, make it easy on everything. Uh, uh, next question we get also, uh, if you want to, yes. So what's the charge voltage for the batteries? What's the open circuit voltage? So we're charging about, uh, the charging system uh, puts out anywhere between 13.8 to 15 volts. Then after it charges up, the battery rests at about 13.2 to 13 and a half volts. So um, that's completely uh, normal for this type of battery. Um, and what's nice about it is it matches up with the radio uh, communications equipment, the radio equipment very well, because the radio wants to see about 13.8 volts to plus or minus 15% on that voltage. Mm -hmm. So we've matched it. So 
Um, by matching it, it's really, uh, it makes the radio perform better uh, because you're getting close to that operating voltage um, with that particular, with, with the particular radio um, okay. in question. So uh, you don't need that, it's the, the battery booster is not needed when you use these batteries. You don't, you're not raising voltage. It's pretty, it's very close to the operating voltage uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the battery as well. So um, right. uh, the question, kind of 10% of capacity on current. Um, uh, Dave is sure one that asked, current. Just he just asked a bit about the, uh, it was asking about the indication that his new battery was, the charge was complete. So I'm not yes. sure. If yeah. So it's, um, so when the charger goes from red to green, uh, when you let it sit on the charger, when it goes green, the, uh, the battery is effectively charged up. The, the charger is delivering a very small current into the battery, but it's from the standpoint of it's fully charged. So okay. you can unplug it from the charger and use it. Uh, we're gonna go to the next slide. Um, uh, and I realized on the next slide, uh, if you go there, that's actually our chart. So I, I, I just realized yeah. I had that in the presentation, um, but it's a little bit more expanded out. Uh, the one that you had on the PDF. Oh, yeah. Well. So, yeah, so it's a bit larger. So we can hit on this again. This, this little runtime chart, uh, we'll hit the point uh, again is, yeah. uh, you know, what are the runtimes? Um, so, yeah, for example, if I got this, uh, I got a nine amp hour battery. Um, I'm holding that up here. Uh, that nine amp hour, roughly uh, eight or nine amp hours, you know, if I have a 10 watt radio, about 16 ish hours of runtime, uh, right. uh, maybe 12 hours at 20 watts and then seven hours at 50 watts. So, um, and I can use some of the larger batteries. If you go to the next slide, uh, for 100 watt radios, um, you'll see we were suggesting the 15 or 20 amp hour battery for seven right. and a half to 10 hours of runtime. So right. uh, that's assuming 20% transmit, 80% receive. And right. um, now this is an interesting question, Randy. Do, do you need a metering device to monitor your power in and out, et cetera? It's a good question. So uh, we, uh, it's, it's uh, it's a great tool to have. So if you were to put, um, it's a metering device that goes between the the battery and uh, and the radio equipment. It's available at the stores as well. It's called a DC inline watt meter, uh, okay. PowerWorks product. Um, they've uh, they, uh, what it shows is the amp hours and the voltage on the battery. So if you were to you charge up the battery and you put this meter in between the battery and the radio, it shows you how many amp hours are consumed out of the battery. So you'll know uh, when the battery is about to shut off because um, the voltage tends to be very constant for the duration of the operation. So you'll see like a, uh, the voltage sitting above 13 volts and then right. the battery is consumed and then it shuts off quite rapidly. But if you have that DC inline watt meter um, power analyzer, the name of the product, um, then that would certainly be a great uh, item to get as an accessory to put between the battery um, and, and, the, uh, and, the and the equipment, also available through the stores. That's great. Let's see, I'm just checking to see if we had, oh, oh I did see one more question. So Dave had another follow-up question wondering, so a 30 amp battery charge with bench supply at three amps? So if he was to use a bench supply, you can he can use a three if he's to set the amp the the power supply the bench supply to three amps. He needs mm -hmm. to set the voltage, set the current to three amps. Yes, it will charge the battery, no problem. Okay, excellent. But the maximum the maximum that he can charge the battery uh, is uh, twenty percent of its capacity. I think now I understand his previous question. So oh, okay. if he was yeah, so if he wants to charge it. Uh, at 20% of the capacity, we don't ex suggest anything more than six amps going in to the 30 amp hour battery. So three amps is okay. Okay, great. Well, this has been a lot of great questions. Thanks everybody for uh, sharing your questions. I know that was, that was actually our last slide in the presentation, I think. But do we have, did we fin did you finish going through all that or did I cut you off? <laughs> Sorry. I think I've hit all the really major points about the common questions that we get. Right. Um, the so. special charger, you know, or if not, or benchtop supplies, things like that. Right. How these batteries work compared. But yeah, if there's any, uh, certainly if there are any questions. Um, 
That's uh, great. Again, we're happy to answer. And uh, if there's great. any more chat questions, we can too. Uh, yeah, I'm just seeing it so far. Well, this has been super helpful. I've been seeing lots of comments. I didn't get a chance to put up because they were, you know, a lot of just thank yous and thanks for clearing up some of my questions. And um, I'm really, I think this has been very helpful. I've certainly learned a lot. And I think the folks that are watching have as well. And you obviously are super knowledgeable about everything about the BioNO. I did see somebody asked earlier, where did the BioNO name come from? Okay, so that's a great question. So it's it's a play on words. Um, so bio meaning green based technologies. No is play play on words for uh, nanotechnology. No nano no innovations. So bio right. no. So it's oh, a play all on right. Words. That's yeah. cool. I like that. Very neat. Yeah. So <laughs> let's see. Oh, and Marty says, don't forget the customer service. Marty was sharing earlier on Twitter at the beginning of, or excuse me, on YouTube here earlier about the excellent customer service he's. Um, how he's uh, received along the way. So thank you for sharing that, Marty. Now, Jerry's wondering, how much time does it take to build one battery? That's a good question. I mean, you're, you're too, yeah. now one thing I didn't point out, you know, Kevin, they're obviously, these guys are creating their batteries and, and getting them out to the stores or out to customers directly. So they have, um, they've been still all showing up to work, although they're, you know, separate, you know, from each other and kind of had to rework their office a, space a little bit, but I mean, is there, how long does it actually take to put a battery together for someone? Like, so, um, yeah, so there's a couple steps. Um, there's the assembly step. So what's going on in the batteries, there's a bunch of cells that are used to assemble the battery. Um, right. and we, there's spot welding machines. Um, uh, so the actual spot welding of the battery, uh, for a single battery for something that's, that's like a, like a nine amp hour or 12 amp hour, uh, the actual, right. the spot welding process could take, uh, uh, 20 minutes or so to spot weld it. Um, and then the, the, the issue is uh, you have, we, we install a circuit board, but we have to actually do a real time charge of the battery. And then we have to put on an analyzer to do a real time discharge. So the analyzing right. test that tests the battery takes the longest period of time that could take several sure. hours to do. Wow. Um, so, so the actual is actually the, the testing side. Uh, of the battery. Uh, every single battery um, is tested. So there's uh, serial numbers on every single one. So we put them on an analyzer. Um, so it, uh, it, it really depends. Um, uh, wow. But, yeah, the spot welding is shorter, but then the actual testing takes a, takes a while to do. That's pretty wild. Um, Frank says he's learned a lot that he did not know. So thank you. So thank you for sharing that, Frank. Um, here's an interesting question for you from Mark. Any issues with running two batteries? in series or parallel? Uh, so the parallel configuration, uh, if you have a, a, a single uh, model, the same model, it will work to expand mm -hmm. it out. But series, the issue with series is um, when you increase the voltage, it trips the circuit board and the battery. Uh, we're working on uh, a, a newer models of batteries that can support uh, increasing voltage. Uh, but with, with the parallel, if you want to expand it out, you can but they have to be of the same model. Uh, they cannot mix models of batteries. Okay. Um, so if you wanted to do that, um, that's, that's an good. option now. Yeah. All right. My buddy Spike's got a question for you here. Can he replace his car and RV batteries? Would that even work? So that's a good question. So we, um, we, ha we have house batteries, they call them, or auxiliary batteries, these fairly large uh, 100 amp, uh, 200 amp batteries for the RVs, for the house batteries, these in the RVs. Uh, yes, we can change them out. Uh, we, yeah. uh, with respect to starting, um, we're not yet doing the starting uh, of the vehicles yet. Oh. Um, uh, there's, it's just the cost, the economics of it, uh, mm -hmm. the, not, not quite there yet. But with the RVs and the house batteries, uh, it works. Also for the marine market, um, like trolling motors, um, yep. as well as fish finders, depth finders, uh, we can also provide auxiliary batteries to run the trolling motor fish finders. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Round cells, yes. In fact, I'm going to grab one right here. Oh, yeah. good. All right. So these are the cylindrical cells that are used, and so that's what's used to make them up. This is oh, wow. this is actually a better cell to use because mechanically it's more it has it's more robust than okay. what they call pouch or polymer cells. Um, they use them in the phones. Uh, polymer cells are molded, uh, but they they can bend as it heats. But with this, it um, it's very 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 rugged. So. We stick with the cylindrical, yeah, from right. that standpoint. Now, I know you talked about this a little bit earlier, but let's cover it again. So any recommendations on bringing these batteries on a plane? 
from Sebastian. So if you, uh, again, so for domestic in US, if you, uh, it's on the website, uh, the also FAA, TSA website, 160 watt hours uh, for carry on, two mm -hmm. is the maximum. If you're going international, uh, it's 100 watt hours. So okay. there's a rating on the size of the watt hours. Um, that's that's the rule. Right. And um, you, can, you can certainly, it's uh, in our FAQ as well. Great. Yay. Thanks, Arnie. And, and Spike says thanks. You are welcome. That's great. Any last questions, guys, before we sign off for the week? Seeing some more thanks again. Um, let me just make sure I'm not missing any more questions. This has been great, you guys. And thank you, Kevin. This has been super. I've been a lot of really good questions here. So obviously people are, it sounds like we got a lot of folks who like to take their their radio or other hobbies out on the road with them. So super. Well, I'm not seeing any more. So I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap her up for the week. So <laughs> again, right. I want to say thank you again so much, Kevin, by Kevin Zanjani from bio no power for joining us for this week's shack chat, providing all kinds of wonderful and helpful information on bio no batteries. Um, again, after the show is done, I'll get some extra um, links for you in the description areas um, as well as, and you know, know if you have any more, any more questions after the show is over, um, you can call any of our stores. Um, you can contact BioNO directly. They're, everyone's ready to help. <laughs> Let me try talking again here. <laughs> everyone's happy to help and provide information. And the FAQ page on BioNOPower.com, there's a lot of great information. There's links to videos of people using their BioNO batteries out in the field. Lots of Lots of good stuff. So, again, thank you so much, Kevin. It's been great to have you here this week. We really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks for the time. Uh, looking forward to hopefully seeing everyone in person at some point, but right now we got to yeah. be on the, on the video conference. So that's right. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, thanks again, Kevin. I'm going to go ahead and pop over here and just finish, finish her off. So, well, that was great, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us again this week. It's always great to see, especially a lot of you regulars out there. And for anybody who was here for the first time, Welcome. So glad you could join us this week. I just wanted to remind you, don't forget, I will post links for you here at the end of the show so that you can follow up on any of your questions. There's some really good charts um, for knowing which battery to choose, which I know is one of my big questions. How the heck do you decide which battery to get? So the answers are all there for you. If you're watching here on YouTube, thank you so much. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all of our videos. If you're here on Facebook, thanks so much for watching and appreciate um, all of your support, everybody. Now, don't forget, thumbs up and subscribe. And sharing is caring, of course. So let your friends and um, ham clubs know about our show. We'd love to have you join us. And if you're on Facebook and haven't checked out our YouTube page lately, go over to YouTube, check out what we've got there. Just posted up a new video this week on the Yesu FTDX 101 day. Well, everybody have a great weekend. I look forward to seeing you here next week. On behalf of all of us here at Ham Radio Outlet, thanks so much for shopping with us. We really, truly do appreciate your business. Have a great day. 73, everybody.